Hi, window watchers. You know what's up here today? You know what I've got in my hand? It's really not a mud pie. It's really some clay. And I thought we would talk about using the different kinds of clay today and how to mix it up and some different things that we could make. Now, this clay that I have right here is a kind of clay that comes in a powder. It's all powdered up, just like fine dust, really. And then you mix it with water and make whatever you want to make out of it. And then, if you leave it sit outside, or just in the room, really, it'll dry until it's just as hard as a brick bat. And then you can paint it with either watercolors or tempera or enamel and then shellac it. And you can use them for ever so many things. There's only one thing to remember, that this kind of clay won't hold water. I mean, so you couldn't make a flower pot out of it or a dish to put um, water and flowers in. But you may have seen some of this clay that never gets hard, that has some sort of oil or plastic base to it so that it always stays soft like this. Well, that isn't the kind of clay that I have today. As I said, I have some clay that's in powder form. And I'm going to set these pieces that I have already mixed right over here. And I'm going to show you how to mix up this powdered clay. First of all, I might mention that I have my apron on again, because this can be rather messy. But this powdered clay you can get at hobby shops, at art or paint stores and art stores. And um, it's not very expensive at all. And it comes in a great big sack. And then perhaps you can see me shake some of it out here. It's a very fine dirt. And you can pour this dirt into a pan and add the water to it. Now you don't want to start with the water and then try and add the clay. You put the clay in the pan like this and then pour out just a little bit of water at a time. Just kind of sprinkle it all over there like that. And then mix it up. And if you'll watch, you can see that the water forms into little balls. See these little balls that are forming here? In some places, the clay isn't the, in the fine dust stage anymore. It's forming into small little balls. See? Just like really when your mother's making pie dough. Well, need a little bit more water than that because that's not all going to stick together yet. I can take some of it and squeeze it here, and that's about as much as we have, but it's going to fall right apart again. So if I take and add some more water, and again, I might say this is rather messy, so that if you have a ring on, or a bracelet or anything, you might want to take it off before you start doing all this. Of course, this will wash right off. It's just like playing in the dirt and making mud pies, really, except that it will get very hard, and you can do other things with them. And there's no sense in running and washing your hands just as soon as they get dirty, because they're going to get dirty again. That's the fun part about working with clay. You can just be as messy as you want to with your hands, and it'll always wash right off, and it's part of the job, too. But then, I can pick up these little pieces from the bottom of the pan here. And I have it more or less formed into a big ball. Well, then comes the job of working it with your hands. And it's very squishy right now. And if it's too squishy, you can add some more of the dry powdered clay. But then you can work it, press it, flatten it out, and pinch it, and squeeze it through your fingers. And instead of washing your hands off, there's only one way to get them, get some of this excess clay, and that's by scraping them off with your other fingers. But then you work with it for a while, and it'll get into the condition so that you, it's not so squishy and slimy and wet anymore. Some of the water has evaporated, and some of it's worked into your own hands, and then it'll be so that you can work it, and you can make well, just many different things with it. But I thought today we would talk about making the different kinds of pottery. You know, pottery is a little bit different when it comes to making that out of clay than it would be if we were modeling. What I mean by modeling is by making a figurine of some sort, or perhaps making someone's head and shoulders. Well, this clay should be worked with just a little bit more before it's ready to use, so I'm just going to leave it right here in the pan and set it aside 
and bring back these other pieces, these other balls of clay that I have that are already prepared. But before I put them right down here on the table, I'm going to take a few sheets out of a magazine, just tear them right out, and lay them down on the table first. And then it, the clay won't get all over the table, you see? Don't use a newspaper, though, because a newspaper is very porous. You put it down on the newspaper, and it soak it right up, and you have newspaper mixed in with your clay. But, you know, a magazine pages are slick, aren't they? So it doesn't soak in quite so much. Well, one of the ways of making a bowl is forming your clay into a round ball like this after you've worked it up enough and sticking your finger right down in the center. Just about like that. Now, these are three of the simple ways of doing it. People that make pottery for a living have what they call a potter's wheel. Now, this wheel turns the clay around for them. But if we don't have a potter's wheel, we just have to do it by hand. And then with one finger in this hole and the other one here on the outside, we can turn it. And while we're turning it, we're pinching it. And every time it cracks, we can push it back together a bit and pinch it some more. And as we keep going around, you'll notice that the hole is getting bigger and bigger. See? And after it's about so big, then you begin to decide or figure out just what shape you want your bowl to be. That might suffice as it is, and if it does, then you could take your finger and smooth out around the top, smooth out all the cracks. If your clay gets too hard as you're working with it, you can, you can dip your fingers in water and smooth them over too, but you don't have to dip your fingers in water every time you want to smooth out a crack. Watch, I'll show you. I'll crack this right here, and then I'll put it back together, and it still shows. But with my fingers, I can push and poke smooth it all around. And then if I wanted it wide at the bottom, I could do some more pinching, only pinching harder at the bottom than I am at the top. And then watch what happens. The clay begins to come up around, doesn't it? And it's beginning to get taller. So that now, instead of being more or less a flat bowl, it's getting to be a high, round one there, see? And then I'd have to go back if I wanted it to stay like this and flatten it all out again. And if I would leave this in the sun with all the cracks smoothed out and smoothed down as much as I could, both on the inside and the outside and on the bottom, then when it was dry, it'd be very hard and I could paint it and then cover it with shellac and perhaps keep pins in it or buttons that would come off of a shirt or something. Just any little all sorts of odds and ends. Well, that's one way of making a bowl. And then there's another way, too. So let me take another chunk of clay right here and show you another way. This other way is called by rolling. And by rolling, you take some small pieces of clay, just small little chunks, roll them between your hands, and then on a flat surface. until you have something that looks almost like worms or snakes. Great big long ones. They don't have to be long. You can cut them up into small pieces. But then, in order to make a bowl from these round, rolled pieces of clay, you wind them around and around and around. Just like this. And then around we go. See? course, just can't leave it like that. Then comes the patching part. And by patching, you press this round circle down. This is going to be the bottom of the bowl. Press it down. And then you work it all together so that you can't see the lines between these rolls anymore. Rub them with your thumb so that it looks now just like a flat piece of clay. And the underside still has the marks of the roll in it. So that you can just turn it over and do the same thing to the underside. This is more or less a sh 
pushes the clay together and welds it. Now then, break off some more clay and we'll start building up the outside. First, roll a little bit between our fingers. Oh, that's almost too big of a chunk to work with. And then on the table. And when you're rolling these pieces, you want to remember to keep them as much the same size as possible. Now, if you look here, there's a weak spot in there because it's a little bit thinner. You see how easily it pulled apart? It's a little bit thinner there than it was at the other end, so I'll just push it back together and roll it tight like that. And then concentrate on this end down here because it's just a little bit too thick. And by just using one finger and going back and forth, I can stretch out this piece of clay and make it longer and longer and longer. And the rolls that go around the outside of this roll of pottery should be thinner than the ones that we use for the bottom. So right around the sides we're going to go now. Only this is on top of the bottom piece of clay. When we get back to where we started, we build up another side. I'm going to make these thicker than they should be made now just to show you how they build up all the way around where this leaves off we just pick it up again and continue building around in a circle and if we want it wide at the bottom we can press them out of course the same thing has to be done with this roll pottery that was done or with the sides that was done with the bottom. It has to be all smoothed together and it might be a good idea to start smoothing it together after you get about, oh, maybe two inches high so that you can still reach your fingers down there on the outside. And by doing it this roll way, you can very easily make your, your pottery dish come out and then go in and then out and then in just by adding these rolled pieces to the side. And then probably you want to pick it up and start smoothing the rolls together using your fingers and your thumbs. And sometimes it might look as if it's getting out of shape and it's not perfectly round anymore. But don't worry about that because you can make it round again after you have all of these little rolls hinged together and, and plastered together like that. Then another way of doing it would be to take a piece of clay and flatten it out on the table and get making it as flat as you could. Just flatten this out here. You could even use a rolling pin. And then you cut out a piece for the bottom that would look similar to the bottom of the one that we did when we rolled it. Only this is just a flat piece that's cut out just like you, if you were making pie dough. And then two more pieces that you could weld together for the sides and that's the way you make the other kind which is called the flat kind of clay work. We'll be working with clay some more later, especially when we're giving presents away. So hope you've learned something and get some clay sometime and make it yourself. It's a lot of fun. Goodbye now.